So I wanted to give some intuition for when I think Unison Cloud's approach to services can provide the most benefit for an organization. So uh, just to review a little bit, Unison Cloud does something called adaptive service graph compression. Uh, there's a link in the description to learn more, but the gist of it is pretty simple. It's that we dynamically co-locate services that are talking to each other. So service A and service B are talking to each other. We try to co-locate them so that that uh, network boundary between those two services is eliminated and there's you know less latency, uh, less use of CPU and IO, and the service calls are just a lot cheaper and, and more efficient. So it's a cool idea. Uh, it's something that on average can, can greatly reduce service call overhead. And now I just kind of want to zoom in on like, well, okay, where does it make the most sense to apply this idea? And I think there's kind of two kinds of services, uh, or maybe two ends of a, the spectrum. So on the one end of the spectrum, we have something like, say, a video transcoding service, where it's doing some intense, heavy-duty computation and uh, probably very low service call overhead. Probably most of the resources it's using are being spent doing useful work, and that's great. Uh, then kind of on the other extreme, we have uh, what I'm calling glue services. And think of, I don't know, a service that calls into a few other microservices, uh, you know, assembles some information, does a little bit of computation, returns a result. And it's services like that that may be a very high percentage uh, service call overhead. And uh, those are the services that I think it can really start to make sense to start moving them into Unison. And in doing so, you, you get a number of benefits. One is you're getting that reduced service call overhead uh, from adaptive service graph compression. And then second, uh, just as a developer, it's just more ergonomic to define services like this in Unison because Unison is really designed for this purpose. It's designed to be able to call into multiple locations, assemble data from multiple places, and do all that with the absolute minimum of ceremony. There is no networking or serialization code that you write. You don't have to deal with a code generation framework or anything like that. You just literally focus on the business logic. Everything's type checked, and uh, it's really a lot like writing code that runs on one machine and it's just a very nice experience. Uh, not to mention, when you go to deploy your service, it deploys in seconds with a function call, as opposed to you know, having to manage this complex build process where you know, you're creating and shipping around these multi-gigabyte containers. Um, you really just focus on the logic, deploy it in seconds, and it's, it's great. So that's my take on kind of when it makes the most sense to apply this uh, this idea. Now, one really interesting thing is that you can kind of mix and match. Uh, so services that are, you know, kind of more glue services, you can start writing in unison, and that's great. Uh, services like your video transcoding service, you leave as is, but what you can still do is wrap those services in a little unison proxy. So the proxy is going to present to the unison world this nice typed uh, interface where you know it can be called with a single line of code uh, but then for the implementation the proxy will just be calling to the underlying service to do the actual logic of that service and so what unison can start to function as is like a typed scripting language for your organization where it's providing this common type system this way for all of these different components to easily talk to each other and for you to be able to de define in a very compositional way uh, these different glue services that need to assemble uh, information from multiple components of your, of your organization. Um, so I think of this a little bit like the split uh, that we see in the games industry where you know, there is the game engine and that's written in heavy duty C++ or what have you. And then there are large uh, chunks of the game logic that are written uh, you know, using some sort of scripting language or DSL that's sort of more suited for that purpose. And I think that kind of separation makes a lot of sense for many application backends. And it's something that we can start to apply with Unison Cloud.